Hi friends, welcome to Azure Content. This is part 5 in Azure Data Factory playlist. In this video, we are going to learn what are the key components of Azure Data Factory. So if you want to work with ADF and if you want ADF to perform your ETL or ELT job, then you need to have a basic understanding of all these key components present in ADF with which you have to work day in and day out. Okay. Okay, so let's deep dive into what are these components of ADF. So these are the basic key components of ADF, which includes activities, pipelines, linked services, data sets, data flows, integration runtime, and triggers. So we will try to understand each of these components in details one by one in this video. Okay, so moving on to the first component. So first of all, what are activities? So by definition, activities represent a processing step in a pipeline. So you can think of an activity as a single uh, step in a pipeline or a single unit of task in a pipeline. If we uh, combine multiple activities together, then it will create a meaningful pipeline for you. So basically activity is a building block of the pipeline. By combining these activities in a meaningful way, we can perform certain tasks in ADF. For example, you might use a copy activity to copy data from one data store to another data store. So we have multiple activities in ADF. You can use these activities as per your requirement. So if you want to copy certain data, then you can use copy activity to move the data from one data store to another data store. So copy activity is one such activity that helps you to perform data movement. So if we see from the top level, data factory supports three types of activities. First one is data movement activities, then data transformation activities, and third one is control flow activities. So coming to the first categories of activities, we have copy data activity to perform data movement from certain data store to another data stores. Okay, so from source to sync, if we want to copy some data, we have to use copy data activity. Okay, apart from copy data activity, we can also make use of data flow activity to load the data from source to sync. Okay. But majorly data flow is used to perform data transformation. So uh, in ADF, data flow is called the data transformation tool. But you can just think that uh, to perform data movement, we can use copy data activity or we can use data flow activity. Now coming to data transformation activities. So we have lots of activities which helps us to transform the data as per the requirement. So you can see the whole list of data transformation activities here. So few of them are used to deal with the big data technologies. For example, HD Insights, Hive, Activity, Map Reduce. So these are used to uh, work with big data technology. You can also work with Spark technology with the help of Databricks Notebooks or HD Insight Spark Activity. So there are many activities. We will learn few of them in details later. Then there comes uh, control flow activities, which we will use most often. Uh, these are the activities which helps us to provide logic into the pipeline. For example, append variable, uh, execute pipeline for each activity, uh, if condition we have, and then switch activity we have. So all these kinds of activities are called control flow activities, which basically helps to control the workflow of pipeline. So basically in total, we have around 40 activities we will see uh, the functionalities of these activities in details in upcoming videos. So I hope you got a certain idea of what activities are and what they do in ADF. Now moving on to the next slide. So what are pipelines now? As we discussed, pipelines are the logical grouping of activities that perform a unit of work. So pipelines are basically the combination of multiple activities, but a simple pipeline can also be created with the help of a single activity. Basically, we can say pipelines are the set of activities which perform a certain task. So together, the activities in a pipeline perform a certain task. The activities in a pipeline can be chained together to operate sequentially or they can operate independently in parallel. So there are multiple ways in which you can group these activities. You need to think uh, about the requirement. So based on the requirement, you need to perform these groupings. So suppose if there are two activities which are not dependent on each other, then you can run them in parallel. 
if there is no dependency then you don't need to connect in series so once these two activities finish their job then you want to run a, another activity then you have to connect it with uh, both of them in series okay or if you if you have a requirement like uh, there is copy activity and once this copy activity is finished so suppose once the data is loaded in adls you want to run a power query and also you want to run a sql query using script activity and these two do not have any dependency on each other then you can run them in parallel and once both of them are finished that means the whole pipeline is finished then i want to run a web activity that will trigger the email notification that the pipeline is completed so you can group the activities together in a meaningful way based on the requirement whenever we create the edf pipeline our motto is to have as less number of activities as possible so that we can perform a certain task in the most optimized way so one important information here is in adf the maximum number of pipelines that you can create is 40 so if you have a requirement to create more number of pipelines you need to create another adf workspace itself so 40 is the maximum number of limits for pipelines in an adf so before moving to the next components let me show you how does an activity and a pipeline looks like in adf so let me go to adf portal so you can see in adf we are currently in the author menu if i expand this you can see there is home author monitor manage and learning center we have already covered each and every menu in details in our previous videos in part 2 so i would recommend you to watch the videos in series in the playlist okay so uh, if you see uh, in the author menu we have the option to create pipelines okay uh, either i can go ahead and click on this new pipeline option or i can click on this plus option where i have multiple options to create other resources as well so i can go ahead and click on this pipeline option to create a new pipeline okay and inside this you can see we have lots of categories of activities so we have move and transform inside which we have copy data activity and data flow activity okay and then we have synapse inside that we have notebook and spark job definition so these are the activities which will help us to create the pipeline okay you can see each of them by expanding these i'm not going into much details so how do we create the pipeline we can simply drag these activities whatever is needed into the white canvas present here so suppose i'm trying to copy the data from some rest api to sql database so what i need to do is we need to create some connection to that rest api and we need to provide the details of that source data set here and then we need to provide the details of the sql server here in the sync data set and once this execution is finished i want to run some notebook databricks notebook so i will connect these two activities in series and suppose i also want to run a uh, hive query so i will go to hd insights and i will drag this hive query and i will run these two in parallel because they do not have any dependency on each other so suppose once these two activities executed successfully then i want to send an email notification saying that the pipeline executed successfully so for that i can use a web activity after these uh, notebook and hive query to run this web activity that will send the email notification so this is how our pipeline would look like so individually these tasks or these icons are called activities and together once they are combined it is called a pipeline so i can then debug these pipelines or i can also create a trigger so that it will be running uh, on a scheduled basis or based on some event so we will see those things in details later now going back again to the presentation so i hope you got a little idea of what activities are and what pipelines are now moving ahead so what are linked services linked services are much like connection strings which define the connection information that's needed for data factory to connect to external resources so basically linked services are the components which store the connection details of any data store so for example if i want to connect with a sql database then linked service is the place where i'll be storing all the connection related information for example server name and database name then user id then password all this information i will have to store in the linked service so that it will be able to connect to the sql server in adf pipeline so we will see how to create a linked service and how linked services looks like so we will see that in practical in just few minutes 
so before doing that let me uh, talk about data sets so what are data sets data sets represent data structure within the data store which points to the data which you want to use in activities as inputs or outputs basically data sets are the reference points to any data store so just to understand data sets are like a wrapper resource on top of a linked service so you can think of it in this way linked service defines the connection to the data store and data set represents the structure of the data so for example if we have a linked service pointing to azure storage then the linked service will hold the connection related information pointing to the azure storage okay so for example it can have the url pointing to the storage account and it can have the account key that will be helpful to connect to the storage account so once this linked service is created we can create a data set on top of this linked service so data set will hold the information like inside this storage account which particular folder or which particular file i want to point to inside which container of this storage account okay so don't get confused let me go to the azure portal and show you practically how does the linked service and how does the data set looks like okay so once you go to the manage tab you have the ability to create the linked service here in the connection menu okay so i can create a new linked service and i can select the data store for example azure blob storage okay so here i need to provide the subscription details and the storage account name in order to create the linked service or we can also enter manually all the details okay so if i select my subscription and let me select the storage account name so i'll be able to create the linked service here so you can see connection is successful and i can create the linked service by clicking on this create option so it has successfully created the linked service for me now if i go to this json option you can see all these connection related information are present to which account this linked service points to and what are the credential so this this is the encrypted credential over it okay now if i want to create a data set i need to go to the author menu and here i need to click on this plus and then data set option again i need to select the kind of storage on which i want to create my data set so since i want to point to blob storage i will select the blob storage itself and if i click on continue i need to select the type of data i have in my blob storage so suppose i am selecting csv format so as we discussed data set is nothing but the wrapper resource on top of the linked service so we need to select linked service on top of which we need to create this data set so i have created this ls underscore blob pointing to the blob storage so once i select that you can see i can navigate to the file or folder to which i want my data set to point to okay so i can browse here and i can select the folder or i can go inside the folder and select a particular file so suppose if i want to copy only a certain file then i will select a file present here and i will click on okay and it will create a data set pointing to this file okay so i can go ahead and select this delimited text 42 from the list of data sets present inside my uh, adf and similarly i need to create a sync data set pointing to suppose sql database okay so i already have a data set so i'll be just selecting it so this is how the sql database data set looks like and it is pointing to a linked service okay which holds the connection related information for my sql database okay so you can see this is the server name then database name and sql authentication is the authentication type and it has the username and password so this is how you can create linked service and data set so basically linked service and data set are having many to one relationship that means we can create multiple data sets on top of linked service okay so we can create multiple data sets on top of one linked service but we cannot point to multiple linked service from one data set okay so this is not possible but this way it is possible which means on top of a linked service we can create multiple data sets so data set to linked service is many to one relationship okay so what i'm trying to say is let me go to manage tab so you can see i have a linked service called 
ds underscore adls okay which has 52 data sets associated with with it okay so you can see multiple data sets can be created on top of one linked service itself okay but if i go to a particular data set if i open any any such data set so here you can see we have an option to select only one linked service in a data set so basically we can create multiple data sets pointing to a single linked service that's what i want to convey so now let me go back to the presentation so i hope you got a little bit idea of what linked service and data sets are now moving on now moving on to the next slide what is integration runtime so in data factory an activity defines the action to be performed a linked service defines the connection details of a data store and an integration runtime acts as the bridge between the activity and the linked service so basically suppose if i want to move the data from one data store to another data store and for that i'm using a copy data activity which holds the connection related information for, for source and sync okay so it has all the uh, connection details which is in which is present in the linked service but in order to perform this data movement we need some kind of machine right so that machine is nothing but this integration runtime so integration runtime is the compute infrastructure used by adf to provide various data integration capabilities across different network environments so we can create integration runtime based on the location on which the data is present so there are three kinds of integration runtime in data factory first is azure integration runtime which is also called auto resolve integration runtime then there is self-hosted integration runtime then there is azure ssis integration runtime which is used to lift and shift ssis package okay so we will learn about it in details in upcoming videos but for now let me just show you how does an integration runtime looks like so i need to go to this manage tab here in the connection i have the option to create a new integration runtime so by default we always have auto resolve integration runtime that is inbuilt and that is auto created whenever we create adf okay but we can also create new auto resolve integration runtime or new shir or self hosted integration runtime by clicking on this new tab okay so here inside this option either i can create azure auto resolve integration runtime or i can choose self hosted ir if my requirement is to move the data from cloud to cloud then i will go with this azure integration runtime and in the scenarios where i have my data in on premise location or in some private virtual network then i will go with self hosted ir so to create a self hosted ir you can use your local machine or you can create a new vm to install the self hosted ir so basically integration runtime provides the compute infrastructure or it provides the machinery to uh, run the adf pipeline okay now let me go back so moving on so this is the last component that i want to discuss about so what is triggers triggers represents the unit of processing that determines when a pipeline execution needs to be kicked off basically triggers are the scheduler for our pipelines okay so we can schedule our pipelines with the help of these triggers so either we can schedule it on the daily basis or we can schedule it based on some type of events so suppose if my blob storage has a new file so on the arrival of the file i want to trigger a pipeline okay or if one of the files has been deleted so the moment the file is deleted i want to trigger a pipeline okay so on this basis also we can create a trigger so let me go to azure portal and let me show you where the triggers are created so inside this manage tab in author menu you can go to create a new trigger so you can see we have four kinds of trigger that is schedule trigger tumbling window trigger storage events and custom events triggers okay so we will learn these things in details in upcoming videos so for now we just understood what are the basic components of adf which we need to understand in order to create our etl workflow so that's it for this video guys i hope you like the content please like the video and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it yet thank you